Hello, readers. Our next book of the day is Locomotive by Brian Floca. Union Pacific Railroad, 1869. Abraham Lincoln. Here's a road made for crossing the country. A new road of rails made for people to ride. Here is how this road was built, with a grunt and a heave and a swing, with the ring of shovels on stone, the ring of hammers on spikes. Clank, clank, clank. Men came from far away to build from the east, to build from the west, to meet in the middle. They cleared the rocks and dug the tunnels. They raised the hammers and brought them down. Three strokes to the spike, ten spikes to the rail. Clink, clink, clink. Here your trip begins at the depot on the platform. The people here, the passengers, have packed and shipped and sold their things, all their things, everything. They have their tickets for a trip, trip of a week through days and nights, across the wild country, down to the sea. Look for the train that will take you, the first train of the trip. Listen for the engine, for the mighty locomotive. Omaha, Nebraska. She's waiting in the rail yard, ready for her work. Hear the clang of the bell, hear the huff of the engine. Her crew is bringing her out. Clang, 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 clang. See a puff from her stack, a puff of smoke, a smudge in the sky. Clang, 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 clang. Here she comes. See a puff, a smudge, a cloud. A storm. Now comes the locomotive, the iron horse, the great machine. Fifty feet and forty tons, wheels spinning, rods swinging, motion within motion, running down the track. She's bright in her paint and her polish, the pride of her company and crew. She pulls her tender and train behind her. She rolls up close to where you wait, all heat and smoke and noise. Hear the clear, hard call of her bell. Clang, 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 clang. Hear the hiss in the spit of the steam. Hear the engine breathe like a beast. <sighs> She carries the crew that makes her run. Brakeman, fireman, engineer, and in charge of them all, the conductor, the captain of the train. He cries, all aboard. Step up, step quick. Up in the cab, the crew's making ready. The train's about to leave. Up in the cab, small as a closet, hot as a kitchen, it smells of smoke, hot metal and oil. The fireman keeps the engine fed. He scoops and lifts and throws the coal from the tender to the firebox. It's hard work, hot work, smoke and cinders, ash and sweat, hard work, hot work. But that's a fireman's life. He tends the fire that boils the water, that turns the water into steam. Then the engineer, the hogger, pushes forward the Johnson bar. He blows the whistle as a warning. Two toots to say, this train's about to go. 
He pulls the throttle lever. He opens the throttle. Not too much. Not a first. Or the wheels would spin on the tracks. Easy. Easy. He releases the steam. It pushes, pushes through the pipes. It goes to do its work. Johnson bar. Whistle. Throttle lever. It pushes, pushes, pushes the pistons, which push and pull the rods. The rods, they swing and rise and fall and make the drive wheels turn. The engine huffs and hisses. The engine bangs and clanks. Metal rolls on metal and the locomotive moves. It gives the cars a jerk and a tug. It pulls them out from the station. Now more steam, more steam. Faster, faster, turn the wheels. Faster, faster, breeze the engine. Huff, 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 huff. The train is on its way. Through the cars comes the conductor. Ticket, he cries as he walks down the aisle. Have them ready or have a short trip. Out the windows, the city runs by. Homes and schools, then farms and fields. They rush up close, then far away. The engineer feels the wind on his face, the fire by his feet. High up in the cab, he feels the engine shudder and sway. He feels it shake as it picks up speed. The sounds of the engine surround him, the rhythm of pistons pounding like hammers, the drivers drumming the rails, the smoke and the steam rushing up through the stack. Chug, 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 chug. The engineer keeps his hand on the throttle, keeps his eyes on the line. He is the master of his machine. He knows her moods and tempers, where to set her bars and levers, when to slow down and when to speed up, when the run, when to run her wide open, full steam ahead. Faster, 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 turn the wheels. Faster, faster, breeze the engine. The country runs by the cottonwoods and river. Westward, westward runs the train. Through the prairies, to the Great Plains, on to the frontier, the Platte River Valley. The hours and miles roll by. The country opens, opens wide, empty as an ocean. Smell the switchgrass in the blue stem, hot beneath the sun. Here the bison used to roam. By the hundreds, by the millions. Here the Cheyenne lived in the Pawnee, in the Ap Apaho. Here covered wagons used to crawl foot by foot, mile by mile, heading into the west. The railroad and the men who built it, they have changed it all. Now there are the long steel rails running like new rivers, connecting coast to coast. Now the telegraph crosses the country. People and mail are traveling by rail. Words are traveling by wire. The world is speeding up. In the rattling, rocking, ch rocking cars, click, clack, click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. There are neighbors to meet, games to play, songs to sing. And if you're bored, if you're hungry, there is the butch, the butch, sorry, the butch, a boy who walks the aisle and sells books, maps, magazines, yesterday's paper, fruits and candies, soap and towels, coffee, tea, sugar, hash, beans, and bacon, and all the cigars you can smoke. Disaster on the Memphis line. Read all about it. 
there's stove in one corner for winter trips to keep the passengers warm. And a convenience in the other. It's tricky sometimes to use it when the train is rolling, running, lurching, leaning left and right. But do the best that you can. Don't wait for the train to stop. It's rude to use the toilet when the train is sitting at a station. There is no plumbing here. There is only a hole in the floor. As the engine pulls the train, it burns through coal, it boils through water, and soon it must stop for more. The engineer slows the engine. He blows his whistle to signal the crew. Down brakes. The brakemen hear the call. They turn the wheels, which tighten the brakes. They tighten them car by car. The train stops at new cities and stops at new towns. Grand Island and Keenery and North Platte and on cities and towns built up for the railroad, built to keep the engines running. At the water tower, the fireman pulls the spout. The fireman lets the water out. Splash! He fills the tank in the tender so there will be water to pump to the boiler when the engine needs it. And when the train is stopped, when it's time for dinner, find the railroad restaurant, find the hash house quick. It's a dollar for dinner and 20 minutes to eat it. Don't waste time. Today's menu, buffalo steak, antelope chops, or chicken stew. If the chicken tastes like prairie dog, don't ask why. Hmm. Then when the crew and their engine have done a full day's work, fresh men and machines will take their place. Into the roundhouse, the old engine goes. Out from the roundhouse, the new engine rolls. The new crew gets to work. The engineer pulls back on the Johnson bar to put the engine in reverse. He blows the whistle as a warning. Three toots to say he's backing up. Now the switchman in the rail yard will attach the engine to the train. He'll step between the tender and cars as the two are pushed together. And at just the right moment, no sooner, no later, He'll put the links and pins in place that will hold the train together. Switchmen must be careful, and switchmen must be quick. For cars get bumped, they roll and jump, sometimes when they shouldn't. And here's what they say about switchmen. You can tell that one is new to the job if he still has all his fingers. Now the tender rolls close. It goes the link clink, down drops the pin clink, the switchman steps away, the train is ready to roll again. Full steam ahead, again, westward, westward, through the night the engine runs. Those up late hear her whistle, her wild and lonesome cry, it echoes on far hills and homes. It sounds in distant dreams. In the cars, it's time to sleep, or at least it's time to try. In better cars, there are better beds. Porters pull them from the ceilings. They make them from the seats. In your car, for a bed, you use your bench. Get as comfortable as you can. Ask your neighbors nicely. Would you move your elbows? Will you move your foot? Could you please stop snoring? In the dark, the country is changing. The plains rise like a ramp to the foot of the Rockies. 
By morning, the country is steep, hard work for one locomotive. At the Cheyenne station, the train gets two engines. Now the train is a double header. Up, up, the two engines climb up among mountains. But see how well the train's path was chosen? The mountains stay to the left. The mountains stay to the right. The train never meets them head on. It winds between, it weaves among, instead of climbing over. Still up, up, the two engines chug. Working together, they make the grade. They make it to Sherman Station. It may not look or feel so high, like the top of a hill or a mountain peak, but this is the highest point on the line. West of here, the country dips and drops again. West of here, one engine will do. Sherman, Wyoming. Slow trains to four miles per hour crossing bridge. Now the country is rugged. Now the train travels trestles. Slowly, slowly the engineer drives. The train is so heavy. The bridge is so narrow and rickety, rickety, rickety. Dale Creek Bridge. The fireman and the engineer don't let the train get off track. This wreck here is not our engine. They watch the signals and switches. They know to slow down for the curves. Steam gauge. They watch the gauge that shows the pressure. If there's too much press pressure, they blow off some steam. They watch the valves of the back head. Those show how much water is left in the boiler. If too much water boiled away, if the level dropped too low, the firebox would melt, would buckle, would blow. The locomotive would explode. Kaboom! So when the valves show the water dropping, the engineer pulls a handle. He pumps in water from the tender. He keeps his engine safe. Wouldn't you? Westward. Westward rolls the train. Down into canyons, again into night. It rolls among sage and below strange stones. Stranger and stranger, the farther you go. Until every mile brings some new wonder. See them in the moon's pale light. Castles, pulpits, witches, slides. Castle Rock. Pulpit Rock and Echo Canyon, The Witches, Devil Slide, and see a sign that hangs from a branch. One thousand mile tree, it reads. One thousand miles? That's how far your train has traveled since the trip began. Still westward, westward rolls the train, rolling below the stars. Above the Great Salt Lake, north of Salt Lake City, the city of the saints that the Mormons have made, you reach Promontory Summit. This is the high and lonesome place where this new road of rails was finished. This is where its two halves meet, one from the east, one from the west. Here they were joined with a golden spike, a spike made of gold. But don't look for it now. The gold was hammered in. The gold was taken out, taken someplace safe, replaced right away with a spike made of iron. It took two companies to build this, build this new road, and it takes two companies to run it. Now you'll change from one to the next, the Union Pacific has got you this far. The Central Pacific will finish the job. Look for the train with the yellow cars. Don't take time to see the town. This place is rough. This place is rowdy. 
don't wander off. All aboard! Here in the west, there's more wood than coal. So wood is what this new engine burns. The fireman lifts it from the tender. He throws it into the firebox. He keeps the water boiling. Then the engineer sends the train on its way out from the station. Through the Great Basin, a bleak and silent land, silent except for the huff and the bang and the hiss of the engine, the click and the clack of the cars. On the train rolls, down through the desert, the home of the Paiute and the Shushone. It's a land of dust and bitter rivers, rivers that never reach the sea. They sink away. They vanish. Think of those who came before, who crossed in covered wagons, traveling foot by foot under the beating sun. No water worth drinking for mile after mile. The 40 mile desert. Then at last, relief. You reach the Truckee Valley, the shadows of trees, the touch of cool air, the smells of woods and fresh rivers. Now there's one last set of mountains to cross the mighty Sierra Nevada. They rise like a wall on the edge of the basin. There's no way to wind around them. These the train must climb. It takes a second engine again to pull the train up, up, up into the mountains. Up, up the engines climb. If the rails are slick, if the wheels won't catch, the engineers can pull a handle to drop some sand down a tube onto the tracks. The wheels hit the grit. The traction does the trick. Up, up, through spruce and pines, past mills and mines. Through shadowy sheds, long and dark. In winter, they keep snow from blocking the tracks. But all year round, they block the view. Up, up, over stone and under. Through the mountain's summit, where granite was drilled and blasted. Here, black powder in nitroglycerin. Boomed. Now in the dark, the engines echo. Chug, 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 chug. Then out the other side. Now the climbing is done. The train changes engines at Summit Station. Again, one engine will do. It's all downgrade from here. Around the curve they call Cape Horn. Down the train rolls, high above the tumbling river, but lower, lower every minute. It rattles and speeds, it dips and drops. The brakemen stand at the ready. The engineer sends some steam in reverse, just to keep the train from going too fast. Down, down past orchard, orchards and towns, down toward cities, down to stop at the depot, to stop and be still at the end of the line. Now your days on the train are done. You are tired and dusty. The smell of smoke is stuck in your clothes. But now you are here, here where you needed to go, here where you need to be. Here with the people you've waited and wanted and needed to see. Now the country's far corners have been pulled together thanks to the men who tend the engines, who mine the trains and their passengers, thanks to the locomotive. 
Thanks to the locomotive, you've crossed the wide plains and deserts. Sacramento, California. You found new cities, new towns beyond mountains. On the Pacific, by that new sea, you have found a new place to call home. San Francisco, California. It's a great diagram, the steam engine. Look at all the labels of its parts. It's a great detailed diagram. This is the Central Pacific Railroad. Remember the story said there was more than one railroad that had to work together to move people from one side, from east to west, and west to east. 